Hey guys, this is Andrew from Dividend Growth Masters. So today I want to talk about uh, reading a balance sheet. And this is a topic that a few people have asked me about. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Now, reading a balance sheet could be, you know, a book by itself. So I'm really going to cover the high level of what a balance sheet is, um, how to read it, going through the footnotes, and just a really high level overview so you can start analyzing balance sheets on your own when you're looking at different stocks, different companies. Okay, so let's look at Apple. So if you think of a balance sheet, a balance sheet, a balance sheet is really like a bank statement. So if you look at um, your bank balance, it shows you know how much cash you have in your bank at a certain point in time, and that's what the balance, uh, and that's what the balance sheet is. So this is showing Apple's assets and liabilities. At a certain date so the balance sheet is as of september 24 2022 and september 25 2021 so typically companies will when they report their financials they'll have uh, two or three years of balance sheet data available so this year and the previous year and we're looking at apple's um annual financial statements for 2022 uh in their 10k financial filings so the balance sheet is split really into two parts. You have your assets on the top and you have your liabilities and your equity on the bottom. So let's go through some of the more common balance sheet items that you'll see on the books. So of course, the first balance sheet item of any company is really their cash. Um, this is basically their cash on the banks, uh, on the bank statements, um, any short term money funds, that sort of a thing. And then you'll have marketable securities. Those are pretty similar to cash, not exactly cash, but pretty similar. And then of course, you'll have your accounts receivable. So accounts receivable, that's basically a fancy term for um, for money that, that, um, that customers owe them. So basically, you know, if you pay by, by credit card or something, um, if you're not paying by cash, then you have a receivable on your books when you have a customer. Um, if It's usually, you know, think of it as like an IOU. So receivable is usually something they'll collect within 30 to 60 days. And of course, you have your inventory uh, on the asset side of your balance sheet. So these are all, you know, the iPhones, the, the Mac books, and all the other stuff, the, the headphones, all that stuff on their, on their balance sheet. Um, so one thing that you, when you're reading in balance sheet, you'll notice that they'll have a section called current assets and non-current assets. So basically the best way to understand that is current assets are assets that will provide value within a year. And these are the non-current or assets that will provide value, be, value beyond one year. So these are basically your long-term assets. So you have things like your plant property and equipment. So that's basically a fancy accounting term for all the land, the buildings that they own, the manufacturing equipment that they own as well. So these are, it's basically a term that describes their, um, they're basically the equipment. Now, moving on to the liability side of the balance sheet. And of course, the liability side is obviously a, a section that you really want to pay attention to because uh, if a company has too much debt on their balance sheet, then they could definitely go bankrupt if you know they're levered too much. So the liability side of the balance sheet is something that you really want to pay attention to. So typically the first thing that you'll see on the liability side of the balance sheet is accounts payable. And that's basically the opposite of an accounts receivable. So the accounts receivable is an IOU from a customer and um, the accounts payable is basically the opposite. So these are, um, these are basically uh, amounts that Apple owes to their vendors. So, you know, their factories in China, that sort of a thing. So they owe 
uh, money to their suppliers because obviously they're not paying in cash. Um, so most typically accounts payables, they'll probably have terms of 30 to 60 days. And you'll notice a lot of companies will have a section in their balance sheet called other current liabilities. And what that basically means is it's basically a catch-all um, bucket list where they'll put a bunch of different types of current liabilities. So they could be like, um, you know, rent obligations. It could be um, like deferred revenue or, you know, any sort of any sort of thing like that. And we'll go into more detail later, but basically you can also look at this in more detail in the footnotes of the balance sheet of the balance sheet and I'll go over that in a uh, in a little bit after I finish the balance sheet here. Next thing that you'll see especially with tech companies is something called deferred revenue. Now deferred revenue is basically um, when a company receives cash up front from a customer but they haven't provided a service the service or the goods to the customer. And under accounting rules, if you if that if that um, situation exists, then you have to have a liability on your balance sheet because you haven't provided you know the good or service yet. So think of it like this: so let's say you prepay for Apple TV, like you prepay for a year's worth of Apple TV. I'm not sure what it is, but let's say it's like $120, so like $10 a month. And you, you pay Apple $120 right away for that service for an entire year. So under accounting rules, Apple isn't allowed to recognize that revenue up front. So they have to put the obligation, the $120 that they received from you, onto their balance sheet as a debt. And they'll recognize that um, as they provide the service every single month. So that, that's basically what deferred revenue is. And you'll see that as a big... Uh, line item on software companies you know software companies like adobe um, microsoft those types of companies because they provide you know software subscription services now the next thing that you really want to pay attention to when you're reading balance sheet is the amount of debt that they have on their books and when i mean that i mean specifically um, interest-bearing debt, you know, loans that they've taken out from banks and from other lenders. And the reason why you want to be, pay attention to this is because if the company is over-levered, they borrow too much, then they can go bankrupt if the business stalls, especially in a recession. So that's a higher-level overview of what the balance sheet is. And when you're looking over a balance sheet, it's really important to not only read this one page of the balance sheet, but it's also important to look at the footnotes. So if you, uh, in all the financial filings that public companies are required to make with the SEC, um, the 10 Qs and the 10 Ks, all the details about all these balance sheet accounts, um, there's more details, There's there are more details describing describing those accounts in what are called the footnotes. So if you scroll through the 10K and you finish the, um, and you uh, finish reading the financial statements, you can go to the footnotes. So this, the footnotes will describe a lot of the balance sheet, balance sheet accounts and more details. So like this, the cash and cash equivalents. So they kind of define what cash, what they define, they kind of define what cash and cash equivalents are is on their books. So they're saying cash is highly liquid investments with maturities of three months or less at the date of purchase. The company's investments in marketable equity securities are classified based on the nature of the securities and their availability for use in current operations. So basically they're kind of defining um, what all the accounts are on the balance sheet. And this is really helpful because not all companies define certain accounts the same way. So not all companies define um, define things the same way. So you definitely want to read this when you're analyzing two companies, even if they are in the same industry.
No. If you continue going through the footnotes, you'll you'll find accounts, you'll find disclosures like this. Um, you'll find disclosures disclosing what exactly their cash balance is. So as you can see, they have different money market funds. So in 2022, they had about, you know, $3.2 billion in um in cash. Um they had US Treasury Securities of $25 billion. U.S. agency securities of 5.8 billion. You know, there's there's lots of disclosures regarding that. Obviously, um, cash is cash is king, so you definitely want to know what the composition is. If you keep scrolling through the footnotes, you'll find a lot of details, um, and the footnotes are important because they can also identify potential risks. So one is the trade receivables. So in disclosures, it's saying Apple has trade receivables outstanding with third-party cellular network carriers, wholesalers, retailers, resellers, and small and medium-sized businesses, etc., etc. So third-party cellular network carriers would be big carriers like um, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc. So those are, those are the people who owe Apple money. And it's really important to read disclosures like this is because um, if you read here, it says as of September 24, 2022, the company had one customer that represented more than 10% of trade receivables. And it also says the company's cellular network carriers accounted for 40 44% and 42% of trade receivables as of 2022 and 2021, respectively. So the reason why you want to go through the footnotes of the balance sheet is to read stuff like this so you can identify potential risks to the company so as you can see um they have one customer that's a really big customer that account for 10 percent of their of the receivables and then they also have the still network carriers who accounted for you know almost 50 percent of the receivables on the balance sheet so let's say you know one of those carriers went bankrupt you know let's say AT&T went bankrupt however unlikely it is um, so you definitely want to be cognizant of that. So if one of the customers went bankrupt, they're probably not going to get paid, um, the receivables that they're due. And then here's the disclosure of property, plant, and equipment. Now, as I said before, this is basically a, um, a bucket where they disclose all of their long-term assets. So like land and buildings, machinery, lease, hold improvements, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other important footnote that you want to read is their debt obligations. So Apple doesn't really have um, as much debt as some other companies that might have on their books. So, you know, some companies, especially in real estate, they'll have a lot of debt on their books. And you definitely want to read the disclosure about debt um, in the financial statements. So let's look at their term debt. So in the disclosures on the income on on the financial statements, they'll usually have um, how much how much they owe to the creditors, um, the maturity, when are these due, and what the interest rate is on on the debt. So if a company has a lot of debt on their balance sheet, you definitely want to read the disclosure about debt to see what kind of risk there is. Um, you know if it is there are certain year where a lot of the debt is going to become due, then you would definitely want to know that. Anyways, that's just a basic uh, high-level overview of the balance sheet. Now, not every company is going to have a balance sheet that looks like Apple, but those are the main accounts that I covered today. You know, cash, accounts receivables, inventories, um, your accounts payable, deferred revenue, and your debt. So those are primarily the accounts that you want to look at. So in addition to just glancing through and reading the actual balance sheet, you definitely want to read the footnotes as well, because that'll give you a lot more disclosure, a lot more disclosure than what you might see on the face of the balance sheet. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, just leave a comment below and uh, I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible.